Okay. Uh, so in this demo, we're going to uh, take our Rhino models and extract drawings from them. And so before I mentioned that you guys are already kind of uh, familiar with exporting uh, drawings from Rhino. We did this with the mini projects, just a basic make 2D and um, export to Illustrator. But I'm going to show you today a couple more um, sort of tricks using the make 2D command and some other commands to uh, extract your drawing. So um, the very first one we'll take a look at is how to create a plan because uh, that's the most basic um, items that we'll need for the project. So I'm going to do this without topography. We'll worry about like site plans and such later. Uh, so let me turn off my topography. So we just have the plan. So if we do a make 2D, which you guys are already familiar with, like when you when you do the make 2D command, it'll basically generate a 2D drawing based on whatever you're currently looking at on your viewport screen. So if I did a make 2D right now, and I selected my objects to draw, obviously it will give me um, my roof plan, basically the top view of my of my building. But obviously, I want to create a floor plan. So how would I do that? Um, and I'm just going to delete this. Eh, no, I'll keep it. Um, so to create a floor plan, the command that you will need to know, and this goes for floor plans and sections, is the clipping plane. So if I type in clipping plane, And I basically just draw any shape. I'll just draw a square. Um, you'll see it actually just clipped out part of my building. Um, so it automatically goes to where the construction plane is. But when I select my clipping plane that I've just drawn, um, I can use the gumball to drag it up. And you will see how over here, it starts to basically cut through my model. Um, so if we wanted to be very exact, um, a plan is typically cut uh, four feet above uh, the floor plate. So I can move my clipping plane in a more controlled manner to four feet. And you'll see here, this is what my floor plan looks like four feet above um, that, uh, that floor plane, or that floor plate, excuse me. <laughs> um, so now we can go back to our top view, but you'll notice here that the top view doesn't show that similar plan. So what I need to do in order to make sure that my clipping plane is showing in uh, one or more of my viewports, um, like, for example, here, you'll see that it's not cutting in my right viewport or my back viewport. It's only showing up in my perspective viewport. What I need to do is go to um, my properties tab in Rhino. And then when I have the clipping planes uh, selected, you'll notice that these options come up. And so this symbol right here is um, the clipping plane palette. And what this does is allows me to select the different viewports that I want my clipping plane to appear in. So for example, if I wanna create a plan, I need to make sure that my top view has the clipping plane selected. So if I zoom into my plan now, you'll see that it is actually cutting through my, um, my model versus if I have it unselected, we see the whole top of the model. So from there, I can redo my make 2D command. So I'll select my objects. 
Um, let me make sure everything is selected. And you can verify that everything is selected by looking at um, your other drawings. And you'll also notice that uh, before I make the 2D, if I change the layer that my clipping plane is in, like, let me make a new clipping plane layer. Um, and I'll make it a color that I don't have on here yet, which is a bright green. Let's change my layer. Um, you'll see here that whatever color layer the clipping plane is on, it highlights basically all the surfaces uh, that it's cutting through, which makes it a little bit easier to visualize and make sure that um, you're clipping through the right areas and in different viewports. So now I can uh, do my make 2D command. And now when my window pops up for my make 2D options, you'll notice here that there's a clipping plane option or C plane. Um, actually, let me see what happens if I just do view because I think that might not matter. Uh, let's just hit okay. Okay, so yeah, that C plane option doesn't really matter. You can keep it on view because like I said, whatever is currently in your view or happening in your view is what uh, will be exported. So here we see I've created my, my floor plan. Smart track, there we go. Um, and so everything, uh, like you guys are probably familiar with when we, when we made 2D that everything is organized into um, layers. And so you'll actually have a clipping plane layer, which if you turn on and off, you'll see that it organizes everything that has actually been cut through. So this helps when we then export this to Illustrator that all my clipping plane layers are in one um, sort of layer with sub layers. So I can quickly change my line weights to be something um, much thicker and you know make it <laughs> visually look like it's being cutting being cut through. Um, so that's that's a plan. And so you can imagine that the process for making a section is actually very similar. Um, and I am going to pause this very quickly because, uh, let's see, the zoom, okay. So creating sections is very similar. All we need to do is rotate our clipping plane and move our clipping plane um, to an area where we want our section to be cut. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we're in the right view to extract our make 2D. So I'll make sure here uh, that I'm in my front view. And I need to make sure that my clipping plane is showing in my right view, or sorry, my front view. Um, so again, you know, simple, make 2D, select my objects. Uh, make sure I'm in that front view port, hit OK. Oops, I don't want to move my clipping plane. And there is a section. And maybe I also want a section through my different floor levels. So if I rotate it 180 and I go to my front view, Oh, sorry. I think that's either right or left. 
Yes, my left view. I can now extract this section. Actually, before I, I do this one, um, another thing we can do, like we've just set up normal 2D flat sections, but you're actually not limited to um, just 2D sections. You can even make section perspectives. So I don't think this is a good view for a section perspective. So let's make this a 180. So let's say I like, I think this would be a nice view for a section perspective. Um, this would be an instance, like if I wanna make a section perspective that I would save one of my views. So again, I would use the named view command and I'll title this section perspective. And then I can select all of that, but make sure that I'm not selecting anything else. And again, as always, make 2D. So if I go back to my top view, uh, okay, that didn't work. So make sure when you select all your objects that um, the reason that that didn't come out correctly was because my roof was not selected. So I need to make sure that, um, let's go to multiple of my views and even turn off my viewport in a couple views. So, so perhaps I want to select all my objects in another viewport And now I'll do my make 2D. The more complicated the model is, the longer the make 2D will also be. Um, so before you make 2D, like if you have a very complex um, project that you save before you start um, doing your make 2D, because sometimes Rhino will crash. So you'll see here that now, when I ever try to move something down here, it disappears. Um, and that's because my clipping plane is placed in sort of in this axis. So anything that is below that will no longer show up. Um, so that's how we make drawings or export drawings in Rhino. And so of course, we take them into Illustrator, make them prettier, um, more pleasing to look at. So we can go over those steps again in a minute, but um, the other requirement of this project is that we make a, an exploded axon. So that'll be what I show you next. Um, and just as a reminder, when we do a make 2D of this sort of section perspective, again, your layers do um, organize the clipping plane layer. So anything that is being cut through right now is still even your section perspective on its own layer. Um, sometimes we have to do some cleaning up of our drawings. So for example, like this line being shown right here is actually what's beyond. So you can imagine um, if we continued this line, it would match up with this corner right here. So that's that other edge of that floor plate, but we probably don't need to see that in our section perspective. So before we export to Illustrator, it's always a good idea to, you know, clean up any unnecessary lines. And here, I think this is unnecessary. But yeah, I think you guys get the idea. Um, before I, I move on to the um, exploded axon, does anyone have any questions? Okay. 
Um, so I'm going to save this. And so for when you do your exploded axon, I highly recommend that you do a save as to your file. Um, because to create an exploded axon, we basically need to pull apart the model you just uh, put together. So we don't want to mess up the nice model that we've created um, right here. So it's always a good idea to do a save as um, and create a new file. So small space. And so let me stop sharing. Let me open that file. Okay. So I am going to just for this file delete all my delete layer. Yes to all. It's going to delete all my drawings. And we don't need a clipping plane for this. So the first step to a exploded axon is to set up the axonometric view. And um, you guys will remember, this is pretty simple. We go to our um, set view and we can set up an isometric. So I guess it's an isometric, not an axonometric, but um, close enough. So let's pick Southeast um, or actually, I think for my project, Southwest might be better. So here is our Southwest view of our building. And what we can do from here to create our exploded axon and um, everyone here knows what an exploded axon is, correct? Okay, <laughs> it's basic, you know, our building pulled apart in multiple directions so we can see um, basically the inside and how things sort of come together in relationship to one another. So to do this, I will stay in my axonometric view. And all I need to do is just use my gumball to just move things. So um, we can start to get a little bit picky about what we want to move. And um, I'm going to explode this because the way I modeled it was one item, but perhaps it's better to show it as individual walls and mullions. So maybe I move this out here. And same thing with these. And maybe that's my exploded axon. We don't know, we don't need to go crazy like exploding everything. Um, I think when we do exploded axons, we should be very um, sort of careful about how how much we want to explode things, and also not exploding things that are very like related to one another. So, for example, here I move these glass walls out of the way because the actual construction of uh, my building, the glass walls kind of are not a structural element. They're kind of separate from uh, that structure. So here, the columns, the steel columns are directly related to my floor plate. Um, and of course, they're also directly related to my roof. But in order to see under my roof, I need to lift the roof off. Um, so I, here I did not, uh, I decided to move these walls out of the way so that, um, cause they're not exactly, you know, related to the connection to the column. So when you make your exploded axons, it's good to sort of be, um, mindful of the relationship of how things are constructed in architecture and what kind of relates to what. Um, so from here, maybe I just want to move this out a little bit more. 
Of course, our ever favorite make 2D command is what we will use. And we'll just hit OK. And if we go to our top view, now we see our exploded axon. How nice. Um, so then from there, um, we can take this into Illustrator and start, you know, adding line weights, um, putting in uh, the lines that show us where, you know, everything lines up. So just as a refresher to the um, Illustrator, or, or exporting to Illustrator, um, we'll go over that right now. So we'll do, we'll select all our objects or line work that we want to export. We'll go to File and Export Selected. And so from here, it'll ask us where we want to save it. Um, and we will save as an Adobe Illustrator file. So space, small space, small space, that's on. Um, yes. And it'll give us our, um, this window here where, where it'll ask us how we want to save it. Um, so of course we want to, not for all our drawings, like for your plans and sections, I highly suggest that you um, preserve model scale and set a actual scale for when you export to Illustrator, but for Exxon metrics, um, and especially since we're just going to be putting them on a presentation and not an actual board that's going to be printed, I'm just gonna hit snapshot of current view. Um, export viewport boundary. Not necessary. Patches. Okay, everything looks good here. So we'll hit OK. And now I will open an Illustrator. So. How's everyone doing? Any questions? <laughs> I see a lot of sleepy faces. <laughs> I have one. Uh, actually, we've done like even I done that. Uh, the whole wall is a as a one one model. Mm -hmm. So how if I have to just remove all walls up uh, from that um, main thing? So is it possible? Um, or we're going. To... You're you're probably going to have to explode your walls and kind of piece them back together a little bit. Or we can try to, um, we can use the split command. So um, after this demo, we can certainly go over that command. Um, Cause basically for the split command, all you need to do is create a surface that, so like if you have two walls that meet together at 90 degrees, you can put a surface that kind of intersects both, both of them and then use the split command. And then those two walls will be two separate objects. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can go, we can go over that in, the, in a moment. Um, but let me continue sharing my screen. So now that we're an illustrator, we can make this bigger. We can try to understand our layers. So this, so this layer right here, sometimes Rhino is annoying and doesn't really give very nice names to our layers in Illustrator. So we should go and organize a little bit. So this is my roof outline. And these are my roof lines. So 
So I can select all my roof lines. We want to create, um, I mean, we could do other colors than black if we really wanted to, if you had a reason for it. Um, we can change our line weights. Let's select a roof outline, same thing. And actually one seems pretty good. So I guess Illustrator or Rhino didn't read the entire outline as a full object. So, so let's just go through. I'm just going to not worry too much about line weights right now for um, just for the brevity of this demo. So I'm just going to make all my lines black for now just by selecting everything. Um, and of course, you'll go through and organize the line weights a little bit, um, make things have hierarchy and um, read a little bit better. But then the key component to an exploded axon is also um, the lines that connect everything. So we'll call these just axon lines. So um, these lines that tell us how everything is supposed to line up. So it's nice to make sure that it's a nice light line weight. You can do a dashed line if you wanted to. Um, and then we'll just do this throughout the drawing. And it's also up to you if you want to sort of make your object see through and that your connecting line is shown through all those elements, or if we want it to be sort of shown as opaque, it doesn't go all the way through and just kind of stops here. And you know, so on and so forth, we continue adding these, these lines. Um, so yeah, any, any questions? So um, I'll take that as a no for now. <laughs> Basically your homework for the weekend is going, obviously finishing your model and then starting to extract these drawings from your model and bringing them into Illustrator to give them some line weights and start to generate, you know, our overall um, plan. So if you have one floor, you'll have one plan, two floors, you'll have two plans, um, a minimum of one section, an axon. And I mean, that's off the top of my head. I have to <laughs> refer back to the, um, the project deliverables, but, um, does that make sense? Um, okay, I'll stop sharing from there. And so actually after, um, let me actually stop recording from here.